My hair is like this because I took a shower this morning, which is more than I can say that I've done in past days. I am eating Honey Nut Cheerios out of a ice cream scoop because that's where we're at right now. I didn't realize it until I sat down, but I'm like one with my couch right now. Can you tell which tones I like? Okay, now that I've single-handedly kept Honey Nut Cheerios in business with my maybe 500th bowl of Cheerios, let's talk about how we got here. My name's Megan Batoon and this has been a very weird week. Obviously, nobody in our lifetime or our parents' lifetime has ever been in a pandemic like this. We've never had to be in quarantine, which is not too unfamiliar from my general living style. I'm an introverted homebody, so this isn't that tough for me to be in my house all the time. I could probably not leave the house for three days and not think really anything of it. Before I got the news that I needed to come home and stay home until further notice, I was in Hawaii, Bali, Finland, Japan, Bahamas, Dominican Republic, and then it was an abrupt halt. So coming off this crazy trip to not leaving at all, it was a jarring transition. But then I just started doing the things that I couldn't do on the road. So my quarantine started pretty eventful. I was doing a lot of shit. The day after I got back, I sewed like 16 different garments. I took everything that I hated in my closet and sewed it into things that I didn't hate as much. This is my prized possession of all of them. It took me three entire days. It's a leather jacket that I had bought from a friend, but it was so big on me. And I already have two other leather jackets, but I loved the look of this one. I wanted it to be a little oversized, but I didn't want to be swimming in it. I was like, I don't really know what the future holds. I don't know if I'll ever leave my house. I don't know if the world is ending. Ending, and if the world is ending, might as well take a little gamble with a leather jacket. Which is good because I was like, let's stop being so precious about things. Let's stop waiting for the right time. Let's just do the things we want to do. And if they turn out bad, okay. I was too scared to ruin the entire jacket, but in this quarantine, it was just me and my fear. I cut it in half. I took the belt and sleeves off, hemmed it, reattached the belt, made it a little bit narrower in the arms. And the final product is this slightly oversized crop leather jacket, which now I think is my favorite one. The fact that I have a favorite leather jacket and have more than one. I was going to say it's an issue, but who cares anymore <laughs> about anything? And then I decided I was like the world's best cook and cooked literally everything that I couldn't get from all all the restaurants that were closed. I was making copycat curried couscous from a place called Mendocino Farm. I made steaks, I made a chicken curry, I made these ice cream balls coated in crushed up chocolate chip cookie, and probably so much more that I can't even remember. And then I realized, even though I love cooking this much, I hate doing dishes upwards of five times a day. So then I started eating my emergency Thin Mints, which I'm now rationing until maybe the end of time, which I deserve one now. There are no rules anymore. We're just going with whatever feels good, which is honestly the way we should have been living this entire time. What if the upside to quarantine is you get to understand what feels right for you and you don't have to push so hard of what you think you should be doing. We finally get to ask ourselves, what do we wanna do? What makes us happy? What makes us feel alive? We can be with ourselves for once and be with our thoughts and really process them instead of projecting them onto other people. I'm gonna save the rest for my podcast. Moving on, what else have we done in this box? Oh yeah, I wanted to make a fire because the closest to outside that you can get right now is my patio. So my friend Addie was on a walk and she came over and helped me collect flammable materials. Quarantine day, who cares, who knows? So I want to make a fire here. Addie's down there. We have fashioned together this little contraption. We have an Urban Outfitters bag masking tape onto a Dyson power cord. She's gathering. It's the right time for a crisp relief, I'll tell you. <laughs> We're getting mixed media kindling out here. Okay, it's pull-up time. Please be clear, that is the only pull-up I will be doing in the foreseeable future. It is definitely working. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got a leaf bag. Okay, we have our power cord leaf bag. 3000 which actually worked pretty well and then repurposed into a food delivery system and my postmate put all the food inside the little bag and I pulled it up and shoved my face. Another day I realized what my essentials were from working from home which really just included one candle and a potato chip bag. She's a simple gal. Today I'm existing in my own filth for eight and a half hours while editing a cooking video that I just shot. I found two things that have helped me get through these days. Number one, this is a candle from Lilabo. I think I've talked about this in a favorites video before. I always thought that like I didn't deserve burning this because it's a really expensive candle. If we cannot leave the house, we bring Lilabo into the house. I wanna smell like this 24 seven. I want my pheromones to be 
doused in this. Oh, designing my pheromone, that would be sick. How are we so technologically advanced and we can't tweak our pheromones? I get it, I see. I am what's wrong in the world. Just trying to change what's inherently us. Understood. Number two, I've been really into watching Little Dicky's show on, I also say Little Dicky like a 60 year old white suburban mom. Little Dicky, even worse when I say it like that. Little Shicky, Little Shicky. <laughs> that's when Little Dicky shaves in the morning. The other thing that's been getting me through is looking forward to the new episode of Dave. I have found myself a new pastime is learning his freestyle rap in the first episode. This is how I end all my days lately. It's more of a mantra than a rap. It's just kind of like, we out here, we alive still. And isn't that something to celebrate? Let's see how good I do today. I will get this. Look at straight out of Comic Con, scrawny Don, hungry Ramadan, my mama Ram. So you can get it, go get every girl so come on some chicken, my first month's a rap. Tactical, I'm back and forth from Mac and Dole to rapping for you, attracting Lauren the fashion form and the transfer point. It's about to put me on the racks of a fashion store. So I was practicing that rap and then I realized the end of it is exactly 20 seconds. So I thought, hey, that would be a funny joke if I did like a, I got tired of singing happy birthday while washing my hands and then I was rapping that little dicky verse. So then I took Two hours to make this video. Which took like two hours to film because I kept either adding parts, missing my cue, or running out of breath. But then, then, I woke up the next morning to a reply from Lil Dicky, so it's worth spending the two hours to learn the rap the next day to practice it, and 63 takes to capture it. I literally wish I was kidding, there's 63 of them. I'm clinically insane. What do you expect? Another day, my friend Kyle asked me to be in a few parts of his online dance tutorial that involved my character eating popcorn. I didn't have popcorn, and I can't leave my house, so I ended up showing you how to make popcorn. Which I actually think is helpful, because not a lot of people make popcorn from scratch, it's literally two ingredients. Not a lot of people make it without it being in a bag. It's better. In the quarantine, you're not allowed to be around other people, as I have my friend Tony here. <laughs> We're quarantining together. Show them your hand. Tony's a childhood friend I've known since I was 14 and he was watching my cats while I was supposed to be traveling for six months. So now due to an incredible turn of events, we are temporary roommates for the duration of this lockdown. That's Tony. Popcorn kernels. When you're making popcorn, just be ready. We're gonna Put it on, we're going at seven. Three tablespoons of oil. The reason why I'm using vegetable oil is because it has a higher flash point. If you're using olive oil, it's gonna burn. As much as I hate vegetable oil, it's actually good for this. Isn't that weird that vegetable oil is the worst oil, but in actuality, vegetables are better for you than other foods? Very the world is upside down. <laughs> Here's the test. You do three popcorn kernels. You put three of these in here and that tests when the temperature is ready. Before that, you're gonna mess up everything. So just don't. And now you wait. This part's like kind of a culinary jack-in-the-box because you don't know when they're going to sprout, but essentially it'll get really hot and then they will pop almost out of the pot sometimes. So you just have to like be ready. A half cup of kernels. Someone smells food. This is the part that gets a little scary. It's focusing, right? No, it should be focusing. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, so that's mm -hmm. one. Usually, like, freaking go. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, oh my god. Okay, it's hot enough. So now we put all of this in here. Go on top, a little shake. If you're ever making kettle corn, you just add sugar in and consistently shake it so it doesn't burn. Since we're not doing kettle corn, we don't really need to do anything. I made other popcorn and stored it in the fridge because rules don't matter any longer. It's very Megan Batune that you need a snack while you're making a snack. <laughs> this is really so simple. If everything goes poorly and I do a bad job at self-shooting the tutorial, at least I have really good popcorn. And that's the upside. Okay, we wait until it's like three seconds between each pop. Look at it! Really good! And look at it, the, the, not one kernel is unpopped. What? Who are you? And then from here, I use pink Himalayan salt. I put hella salt. Do you hear that? Hear this. Wait, that was bad. <laughs> is it bad or gross? Ba, 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 ba. And now we shoot the sketch. Or we just eat this. And then since we had to socially distance, Kyle nor the cameraman could come into my place. So they sent me a couple lines of things that I had to say or do. These are some of the takes I sent over. <laughs> and 
like this girl doesn't want to dance. <laughs> I refuse. If there's more, I refuse. Part of part two. <laughs> I feel like I've been doing this for five years. Ah, oh, there's two of them. Ah, oh. you see this guy? The fact that you think anyone can do that right now. Absurd, but who's gonna learn it? Me! Here we go! Five, six. Can we have a suggestion from the audience? It's an improv joke. This is so difficult. I mean, I'm drowning. Can you say, like, you did it at some point? You what? did it! Wait. You're doing so good! I love that I could just ask someone to give me affirmation whenever if I just like pretend like we're shooting a video. Like, can you tell me I'm doing a good job? I did it! We did it! We did it. That was the sad take. I did it! We 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 did it! Okay. That's I would say even more sad. <laughs> should I get a cat in one or should I continue with the popcorn theme? Crap! Yeah. If I shake the treats, they might come. <gasps> Am I the worst cat person? You might be an animal wrangler as well. Carlos <laughs> loves to eat my food. What if I ate his food for him to go, I need a baby. You're really committing to the bit. I know, I'm like, yeah, it's so good, and then I end up eating cat food forever. We did it! 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 Okay, I have to dance now. Seeing as I can't use the actual song in the video since it's copyrighted, here's a vague 2010 style royalty free pop song. where I decided my work from home setup wasn't good enough with just a candle and potato chips. I don't know why my outfit looks like this on camera. I swear it looks better in person, maybe. Oh, you know what? It actually doesn't. <laughs> I'm not wearing shoes, but had I been wearing shoes, and then one of these. I mean, there's only so much you can do in a quarantine. I think without all of this, this just looks like I'm an off-duty doctor that got their license revoked. Okay, here's what's going on. I'm getting cooped up, as we all freaking are. This is generally my work setup. You've seen this in a couple videos. A lot of the favorites and sewing videos are done here. This is where I'm editing. In the far distance, you can see how beautiful the day is. So I'm going to move my workspace the closest to outside that I'm allowed to go. Oh, man. What's freedom like? Every Filipino person is yelling at me right now for wearing shoes in the house. This is the only sense of normalcy I have. So, ah, ha, I am sore and should have stretched. Look at this. I have this beautiful double pocket door that spans the entire wall, almost. So I figure I'll put this table, which is full of an a thousand piece puzzle, which I thought was a good idea at the time, but soon enough became the worst idea I've ever had because that it's hard. So we're just gonna... Uh, I really thought that pocket door went further than that. Well, we all have our limitations. I'm gonna like lodge this into the window. A fire hazard? Yeah! But how beautiful of a working space. Because then when the breeze comes, it'll start having this really whimsical kind of... It's like in Sex and the City when Sarah Jessica Parker is writing her little hypothetical questions. I don't know why I call them little as if I'm better than anyone. She has like some sort of whimsical movement of, what are those called? I was gonna call them wall sheets. They're curtains. And this is really sad for literally the girl that does home design for a living. Doesn't remember what curtains are called. Cool, we're all losing our minds out here. Oh God, oh my God. Why do I have trees inside? It looks quaint. It looks productive. It looks inviting. I can't tell if I love it yet, but that's today's office. How's it feel to see the most riveting part of my day? This is the most exercise and action 
that will happen in today's time. Wow, look at that. A loading screen has never looked so good. When you're sitting here, you can see the trees and all the places you can't go. It's great. Okay, I've been testing out the new work setup and it's honestly pretty good. It feels in a way like a beach house, but I found a way to make it even better. So this is now my new full work setup. This is the whole thing in its entirety. I mean, there are no rules anymore. Wow. Is this embarrassing or is this just like my final form? I think it can be both. At one point, I moved all of my furniture in my living room and decided to do some at-home Pilates workouts, which turned into me scrolling through TikTok and trying to do handstand challenges, which was a bunch of different handstand variations set to a Shakira live in concert audio track. And I don't know why I took that upon myself because I can't even really do one good handstand, let alone all of this. Oh baby, when you talk like that So I abandoned trying that and then ended up freestyling to Donna Missile. Which I know at some point I'm gonna revisit, especially if I'm just locked in my house forever. I'm gonna learn all the TikTok challenges. I need to be able to do that challenge. I need to be able to do all the challenges. Why can't I be okay with not being great at things? And that seems like a recipe for a great video. <laughs> Stay tuned for that one. But that has been a look into whatever this has been. Honestly, it hasn't gotten more eventful than that. I've watched so much TV. I've eaten so many calories. I've worked out one time, but that's fine. It's truly okay. I saw something on the internet. It said something like, your value is not tied to your productivity, which was mind-blowingly triggering for me. We gotta give ourselves a break every now and then, and I think this is a good time in order to do that. It's almost like we're being forced into taking a break and forced to look at ourselves and look at the way we were living. This period of quarantine is almost like an inventory. Checking in what makes you feel good, what makes you feel alive, who are the people that you want to keep around you, who doesn't add anything to your life, this is, again, going podcast territory. The main thing is there's no right way to be in a quarantine, but I do know it makes it better. Cake, out of an ice cream scoop, because who cares? Oh, oh, it's everywhere. See, it's not so bad. But I'm losing it.